everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for Quick Tip Thursday. Today's Quick Tip is going to be taking a closer look at Clarity's new masking tool. With our new program, Topaz Clarity, we have also introduced a reimagined masking workflow and tool set. So not only do we still have edge aware technology, but now we have colorware brushes, a smart feather tool, and a color, aware, a color aware quick mask that I love. And so we're going to be taking a look at some of those newer tools that we have available in our masking workflow. To start off with, I'm just going to choose a, a, a preset over here on the left. Let's go into the architecture and see if maybe I can get some presets here that I might like. I really like the texture that's going on, so I really want to highlight the texture in this image that I don't feel as highlighted as much as it can be. So I'm just going to click on exterior texture, and I see that a lot of that texture starts to have lots of contrast variation or higher differences in contrast and really start popping out. Here's before, here's after. Sometimes when you start off with a preset like this, you'll notice that it affects areas of your image that you really like and then it affects other areas of your image that you might not like. I don't particularly like what is happening to the sky in this particular preset. So we're going to be working on taking that out of uh, out with our masking tool. I'm going to go ahead and close this left-hand area so we can just not be distracted by that left-hand panel. And let's see what's causing this darkening of the sky. I think it's actually the contrast and clarity that that is happening. Let's go ahead and take a look. And I am right with that. So it's actually this dynamics group within the clarity group that is causing this kind of darkening at the edges. So what I'm going to be doing today, or just right now for this particular workflow, is taking my clarity adjustments out of the sky. Within Topaz Clarity, we have a masking module attached to each and every major group. So we have one for our hue, saturation, luminance. We'll be going over that one here in just a sec. But this one will be specific for the Clarity one. So I'm going to open that on up. If you're unfamiliar with Topaz Clarity, then this is definitely something that looks new to you, this new masking module. It's different than our other programs. It is still based upon the kind of classic um, technology of a reveal and hide type of um, technology. So white is actually going to be a reveal mode where it reveals the effects that are happening in your image. Black is going to be a hide mode. So if you want to start off with a completely black mask, you can easily come down and just click on the invert button here. And now you'll see in your main window over here, all of those clarity adjustments went away. I am going to start off with the white though this time. So there we go. We're back to our white mask. If I want to change the actual color of the brush, I just choose the reveal brush, which is my white brush, or the hide brush, which is my black brush. I'm going to be working on a white mask, therefore I'm going to be working with my hide brush by default. We do have undo and redo buttons right here for you, so if you make any mistakes, you can quickly step back. We have that invert icon that I just showed you would go take you to a black mask to begin with. We also have a reset button, which will get you back to a default white mask. Over, if you come down below that, over on the left-hand side, we have our brush icon. And by default, that is going to be selected. There are three different brushes within this program. We have the normal brush. Normal brush is what I like to call just kind of a dumb brush. It, you are allowed to choose the strength, which will be how opaque the brush is. Allowed to choose the brush size, so you'll see that move up and down as you take that um, to the right. It'll move up, take it down, it'll be uh, smaller. And then the hardness, which will control the feathering of the brush. So once you choose those three, you can come in and just paint in your image. And you'll see over here in the top area that that is actually not edge aware at all. It's just a normal type of brush with soft feathered edges and it's not really um, detecting these edges at all. Let me go ahead and reset my hue, saturation, luminance. There we go. Now I'll reset this. And we've reset set our mask now and we're going to go on to our edge aware brush. The edge aware brush is very similar to the technology that is in our local adjustment brushes in our other programs. It is improved at awareness, so we have worked on that algorithm, but it's basically the same idea. You just choose edge aware, choose your strength, 
what you'd like your brush size to be, how hard you'd like your brush, and as long as you keep the crosshairs, which is right in the middle of your brush, on the color that you want to actually change or take the effect out of, then you can quickly take it out of that particular area without having to worry about affecting other areas of your image that you don't want to. So it's very precise. So you can see over here on the upper right just how precise and easy it is to do a quick cutout. Now there are a few little areas I could go over again, but that is uh, just to show you how quick that, that really is. I'm going to go ahead and reset that, and we're going to go on to our Color Aware brush. The Color Aware brush is something new. It uses the same technology that the Edge Aware brush does, except you have a color picker to select that initial color first and not have to worry about actually staying in any edges or worry about any of that kind of stuff. Worry, worry where the, the center of your brush is. So you just click on this little color picker over to the right. Your uh, mouse will turn into the eyedropper here, and you just select on the area you want to affect, and I want to select select the blue sky. Once I select the color, the brush turn or the the mouse turns back into a brush and I can just, just go real quickly over my sky without having to worry about anything. It's only going to be affecting the blues in my image. So you can see over here on the right it's very very precisely affecting only the color blue it's still leaving my clouds and everything. So that is uh, something new to this masking workflow. And I love it, it's so much fun. So we talked about the strength, the brush size, and the hardness, and now we also have preset A and B. Preset A and B, let me go back to our normal size brush just so I can show you this. And we'll get back there. Preset A and B allows you to work with two different size, strengths, basically two different brushes at once. So if I want to have one brush that's at strength one, the brush size down, the hardness maybe pretty high. If I scroll across my image, you'll see it's a very hard brush, pretty small size, and definitely very hard. There's not a lot of feather going on. If you want to work on that type uh, or work with that type of brush on a portion of your image, but you also want to work on a portion of your image with a really soft, larger brush, you can go your preset B, maybe take that strength down, brush size up, hardness down, and you can see over here in the upper right, it is a much larger, softer brush with um, a larger brush size with the strength at about 50%. So you can set these two presets to continually work during your workflow. So that's just kind of a workflow tip if you find that you use this masking module quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and press reset all and we're going to talk about this gradient type. The gradient is really cool as well because you can quickly just add a gradient to your image. This is great for certain types of images. Maybe you're working on landscapes and you just want to quick just take out the sky. You can quickly do that and you'll see the different gradient types over here on the right. Linear gradient is going to uh, follow a line like you see here. So if I, let me reset all again, if I do a line from the top to the bottom of my image, it's going to follow this horizontal line and mask out just the top and it's going to slowly gradiate into a non-masked or reveal mode. We also have a radial gradient. The radial gradient radiates from a defined point, so you can just click on that. And you can see over here, it will radiate from that middle point. And then we have a reflected gradient. Reflected gradient, if you do, it's also going to follow a line, but it's going to be reflected to itself. So if I scroll, or if I have a starting point and an ending point, it will reflect itself um, from that middle line. All right, those are our just regular tools and then our specialized tools that I'm super excited to show you about. This color range tool is my new favorite. The color range tool, let me show you where I just got that. Uh, you just have this color range button in the lower left hand area of your masking module. Click on that and a new set of tools or a set of um, sliders will pop up for this color range uh, choice. And you'll also see in the upper right a mask that is automatically generated. That mask is generated from the green dot that is in the very middle of your photo. It shows up whenever you click on the color range and then scroll into your photo. Once you scroll into your photo, you'll see that green dot. You can move that anywhere you would like. 
basically I want to move it to the area that I want to mask out, which is the blue sky. So I'm going to move it into the blue sky, and you can see over on the right, now a lot of that blue sky is now masked out based upon that color. I can change two things. I can change the size, which I'm going to take that size up so it'll cover most of the entire sky. And then I'm also going to change the sensitivity to come down so it'll get more and more of the blue color shades. I might actually, I really want that left-hand corner taken care of. So there we go. So now over here on the right, you'll see that most of that blue sky that was having the issue with the contrast is now gone. I can just press OK, and it's as quick as that. It's very exact with that sensitivity and size availability. The last thing I have is the Smart Filter, or Smart Feather, excuse me. The Smart Feather is right next to the Color Range tool. When we click on it, you have several different things that are going to allow you to feather your mask that you've already created. So basically, feathering means that you're going to be blurring those edges of the mask that you've already created to create a softer transition between the masks and unmasked areas. So the feather radius is going to determine the size of that feather. And you can get really soft, as you can see up here, versus not so soft and bringing that back down. So I'm going to go about right here. And you can see it's just a nice softer edge at this point, but you still see these areas pretty distinctly. The Feather Aware is going to actually increase the awareness of the edges, yet still allowing for a softer transition between um, the unmasked and masked areas. So as I take this up, keep an eye over here on the top right, and you'll see those edges are brought back a little bit, but you still have some softness about the overall mask. So you can bring the awareness back, but still keep that soft feather uh, look you're after. Then you have mask contrast, which is going to determine the edge brightness of your mask. So as you go up, it'll start filling in the whiter areas with more white. So you can come in and just take that up, and it'll try, it'll give these edge details like more firmer definition as you take this mask contrast up. And then the mask strength is going to determine how hard the mask is applied to the subject. So as you take this up or down, you can bring down that strength or bring up that strength. All right, everybody, have a great evening, afternoon, morning, and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Hope you can join us. Bye-bye.